Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a demo of my first ever Android application. Now this Android app was built for school. So as most of you know, I'm a computer science student. I'm actually enrolled in a software engineering class this semester. And our final project for this class was to create this exact application. So every group had to create the same app, a walk in clinic organizer. You guys will see how this works. There's three main users that we had to accommodate here. So an admin user, an employee user and a patient user. And I'll talk about the response responsibilities of each of those users as we kind of go in and talk more about the application. Now I will say I actually did build this with four other students. So most of the other students did a lot of the UI stuff and kind of the lighter weight backend work, whereas my mo main responsibility was doing the more kind of intense backend stuff that was a bit more difficult as well as all of the database components. And I would say that I probably wrote a lot of the code that you guys are going to see in the GitHub repository that I've linked down below for this project. Also, if you guys would like to run this app, there is an APK down there. So if you have an Android phone or you just want to try it on Android Studio, you're more than welcome to do that. And in case I didn't mention that this is written in Java. All right, so let's actually just get in and start looking at the application. So I'm going to start from the administrator user and then go to the employee user and the patient user, which is our three users for this application and talk about what each can do. So this is our admin login. I'm going to blur it out because you guys can actually log in if you see that. And our admin has two main things that it can do. It can create, modify and delete services that can be offered by the different walking clinics and it can view and delete the different users of this actual walking clinic app. So here you can see this is a list of all the users. Coincidentally, they're all named Tim because those obviously is me that's doing the user there. And here is a list of all the services and they can be offered by the walking clinic. Now, if I hard press on one of these services, I can actually modify them. So I could change this to be something like, I don't know, um, checkup or whatever like that. We'll do an exclamation point that could be performed by a doctor. I can update that. And now you see we have that there. And then obviously I can add services by putting them up here, choosing who performs them and clicking add. Now this is useful because this allows the admin to kind of moderate which services are allowed to be offered by the different walking clinics. Okay, so that is our admin user. Now the next user that I'm going to talk about is our employee user. So I'll actually log in as one that I've already created just to save us a bit of time here. And you can see that this is our employee um, user kind of interface. So we have a profile, hours, services and working hours. So essentially kind of the theory behind this is each employee is responsible for one walk-in clinic and they're responsible for setting up that clinic profile. So information say about like, you know, the road or the street address that this clinic is on, as well as the phone number for the clinic and the name, you know, I can change this clinic name to just be cool clinic or something like that. So we can see which one this is. I can change the accepted payment methods. And notice, obviously, we'll have some checks here. So like, let's say I don't enter a valid phone number, then and I click save, please choose that one. Okay, let's choose one of those. Now it should give us the pop a message invalid phone number. So there's checks to make sure all of this works. And if I click on this little trigger icon, whatever this we want to call that will actually open up Google Maps and show us the address of what we're talking about. All right, so let's go back here. Let's actually hit save for this clinic profile. That's going to save that in the database now, which I'm going to show you guys later. Next, we can actually configure the clinic working hours. So this is the hours that the clinic will be open for. So this is important, obviously, to be able to set. Now, this was uh, an interesting decision on how we were going to do this, because technically, you know, a clinic could be open some days, you could close for a holiday, you could be open one week, and then maybe on Friday next week, you don't want to be open. So what we decided to do was allow the user to set the working hours for the clinic using these little time pickers, and then decide if a day was open or closed by simply clicking open or closed on this little um, toggle on the side. Now that can obviously um, change every week, you could go in whenever you want and close a day without actually modifying these hours. But you know, that's up to you. So save will save that change for us, obviously. And then here, this is a little bit of information about how this works in case anyone's confused when using this page. Awesome. So we updated those. The next thing to talk about is the clinic services. Now clinic services needs to be added by the employee. So essentially the employee says, well, what services do our walk-in clinic ads? They can have a look at all the services that can be offered and they can long press on one of them if they'd like them to be offered by their clinic. And we can see that these are the ones that are currently offered. Next we have working hours, which is simply kind of similar to uh, clinic hours, but this is actually the working hours of the specific employee that's using this application. So they're setting kind of their own shift or their own schedule. Don't ask me why we need this. It's just was part of the rubric that we need to follow when creating this app. 
Okay, so lastly, I'm actually going to sign in as a patient employee now, or patient employee, as a patient user. Oh, that's not a login. So let's actually just create a new account, and I'll show you that feature as well. So let's make our name, you know, patient like that. We'll make our username Tim. Uh, actually, let's make it P Tim, like patient Tim. And then QWERTY is the famous password. Okay, so that's a patient account. We'll click that. We've created this account. Now it says, welcome P Tim. You're logged in as a patient. And as a patient, we can do two things, which is book appointments, or we can view and rate past appointments. So if I show you and I view appointments here, currently we have nothing, but if I go to book slash check in, I can view the list of different clinics. I can actually search for clinics based on name if I wanted to. So in this case, let's go Tim. You can see that now that actually is going to filter out and give me this clinic and it shows the rating for this clinic. You can also search by address as well as the days of operation. So what days the clinic are open for it, but by default, it starts by just showing me all clinics that are available. Okay, so let's look at Tim's clinic here. We can see that it's rated three stars. I can click this little icon again if I want to see the address in Google Maps. And then I have a current waiting time. So if I were to go to that Walton Clinic now, how long would I have to wait to be seen? And that I'll talk about later. Uh, sometimes this messes up a little bit, but you can see the list of clinics that are here. First time when you click on it, sometimes it doesn't show up. Just a database lag there. And this is actually what I can use to book an appointment. So I'm in my clinic. I can view the information about it. And if I'd like to book an appointment, well, I can choose a date. So let's maybe choose, you know, Tuesday the 10th is when I want to book an appointment. I'll choose a time. If I try to hit save in a time that is not available, it's going to tell me clinic is closed at that time. So let's make this available. Let's go, you know, 10, 26 a.m. We'll hit save. And notice when I do that, it actually automatically rounds my time to the nearest 15 minute interval because that is when we allow appointments to be booked. Next, I can click book appointment, give that a second. That's going to book the appointment for me. And now if I go into view appointments, I can actually view my upcoming appointments and click on that for some information or decide to cancel the appointment if I'd like. Now, I'm just going to make an appointment in the past quickly and show you guys how it works to rating past appointments. OK, so now I'm going to show you a more advanced feature of kind of the clinic booking check in process. So essentially what I've actually done, if I view my appointments, I've booked another appointment here. So I've booked one that's actually at 830, which is in two minutes from what it is right now. And I just want to show you what happens when I go to try to book another appointment. So if I go to cool clinic, you can see that it gives us a current estimated waiting time of 16 minutes. Now, the reason we get this is because currently it's 829 and the next appointment will be finished at 845 because we booked one at 830. Each appointment actually lasts 15 minutes. So this is telling us essentially when is the next time from the current time that we can book another appointment that we could be seen. So I think that that is pretty cool. This is a feature that we needed to add. It was mandatory for kind of the deliverable, but to get it work properly with like time in the past and appointment stacking up is actually not as easy as it looks. Now I'm going to go back to view appointments here and I'm going to show you what happens as soon as this hits 830, where my appointments are actually going to change. So my appointment from the here that is, you know, at 830 is actually going to go into the past appointments page as soon as we hit 830. All right. So it's 830 now, which means this appointment is officially in the past because, you know, it's actually just just happened. Technically, we could have made it at, you know, 845. Once the appointments finished, it goes in the past. But I think this is more than fine. And you can see that now when I have this past appointment, there's a button that allows me to rate my service. So how I felt that the service was. So here, you know, this pops up a little dialogue, I can choose the amount of stars I want to give this. So maybe we'll give it five stars. Then it says you rated this five stars. And if you click on it again, you can see the rating that you gave it. Now I can also decide to remove this appointment from my list of past appointments. So say I have a ton of different appointments here, I can decide to remove that if I want to see, you know, my most recent ones or anything like that. And then this upcoming appointment said I don't want it anymore. I can just cancel it by doing that. All right. So that has been it for my first ever Android application. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a ton of stuff that needs to be improved. I'm going to say right now for any of you guys that look at the GitHub repository, you are going to be very disappointed when you read through the source code, but I will say this project was on a deadline and kind of my last concern was writing good source code when, you know, I have a million things to do and all I need to do is finish this project. So it's an absolute mess of a project. You guys can read through it, um, look at the source code if you want, but please, you know, go easy on me because remember, this is my first time building an Android app. I had no plan and this is really just patch fixes whenever something went wrong. 
Anyways, yeah, that has been it. I mean, if you guys have made it this far, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this app. Could I add anything to it? Is there anything that's really bad? Did you like something about it? And are you interested in possibly building an Android app in the future? Personally, I had a lot of fun doing this. I learned a ton and I feel like I could go out there and build, you know, a proper Android app now with the amount of knowledge that I've had. So as always, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel down below. And if you want to run this app, the GitHub repository is in the description.